this morning, but this is a green day. Check it out. Check it out. Green. Huh? Hey, green is in. <laughs> Let us hold hands on this Memorial Day Sunday. We are in community this morning. You are holding your hands of men and women who are supporting you through whatever you're going through. It does not matter what the issue, we don't even have to know what the issue is. Just know you've got our support. Huh? That's what it's all about. Unconditional love. Forgiveness. You've got it this morning. We're going to pray. You may pray with your eyes open or your eyes closed. Nick will lead us in prayer this morning. Thank you, Douglas. Um, here at Clyde, you can pray with your eyes open, your eyes closed. There should be some prayer requests behind me on the wall. Feel free to hold those in your heart as we say, Good morning, God. Thank you for waking us up this morning on this beautiful day. Thank you for a safe journey here to spend time in our community and our family. Lord, we are so blessed to have this family and this community of support that we have here. I'd like to send a special prayer today for courage and faith. There are so many people in our community right now that are in transition, uh, either with their job or with health. Um, we have a lot of graduates. We have a lot of people that are seeking new things in their life. So Lord, please give them the confidence and the courage that it takes for them to know and feel comfortable with where they are at and where they are going, and to have faith to know that you will never, ever leave us ever leave us all we need to do is call you down and we will feel your presence in our life so thank you lord for that courage thank you for helping us through the troubled times thank you for people uh, in recovery lord and help them with another day in their recovery yes. i want to pray for our children there are so many in our community and we are blessed to have them all here 
learning about unconditional love, social justice, and all the things that we stand for here at Clyde. So thank you, Lord. Thank you. We are a blessed community. We are a blessed people. Thank you. We pray these things in your name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right on. Namaste. Namaste. Good morning. It is now time for our community song. And we're going to ask you to all join in. All of you to join in and let's sing this. We're not going to study war no more this morning. So everybody, I need your voices, I need your help. So join in with us. Well, I'm gonna put on my long white robe. Down by the river. I said, down by the river. I said, down, down, down by the river. I'm gonna put on my long white robe. Down by the river.
We are here to celebrate life. We didn't practice it. Okay. We didn't write it out on a script. We didn't plan it. But we are ready. Are you ready to celebrate? Oh yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get down today. Well, we got down at the nine o'clock. We're gonna get down at the eleven o'clock. If you don't know what that is, just follow your neighbor. <laughs> okay, let's hit it.
Let's do it, yo. Sister has it down. I'm telling you, she has it down. Yeah. God, I tell you, it's so good to be around. Good music. You know, I, I grew up in a church back in Texas where uh, there were about 25 people in the choir. And, and inevitably, because I grew up in a family that did a lot of singing, and we, we sang a cappella a lot, so I had a pretty good ear for when somebody was off, you know. <laughs> and Lord had knows, I'm telling you, every time we'd sing certain songs at that church, for years, I'm talking about for years, we would end it on the wrong note. Lord, there's nothing like having a wrong note song. And there's nothing like having musicians play something that you're not singing. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Lord of mercy. Oh, we got it all here. I'm not just talking about a little stuff. We got it all here. It's here. Let's celebrate life.
Mayuka Linda Rose. Mayuka Linda Rose. I think this is the first time they've done a duet together. But you got it down. You got it down. Yeah, you got it down. Yeah. Really something. Now listen, I want you to respond to this. This is something that I'd like to see happen for you to make it happen with me. There will be a dedico dedication ceremony unveiling an eight-foot landmark sculpture representing the history of Japanese Americans on Thursday, June the 2nd at 5 p.m. at the Peace Plaza, which is at Post and Buchanan. This permanent monument will be placed in three cities, San Francisco, Los Angeles, and San Jose. Janice Mirakitani was commissioned to write a poem to be permanently engraved on these sculptures. Stand up, stand up Janice. to be permanently engraved on these sculptures. And her poem was accepted by all three cities. Yes. And if you can get Los Angeles <laughs> to accept something that we're doing in San Francisco. <laughs> you gotta be tough. I tell you, you gotta be tough. But she said before those committees, and they ask her all these questions, and she answered them her way, and they said, we want you. We want you. And this monument can be viewed for generations to come. Janice Mirakitani, 5 p.m. this Thursday. This Thursday. Will you come down at 5 if you can? Uh, I'll even send a... No, I won't either. <laughs> come on down. Oh man, I tell you, this music is so good today. I feel like shouting. By the way, shouting. I feel like shouting. But let me tell you what happened to me the other week, the other Sunday. Man walks out of the church after the celebration that Sunday and says, You know, you know, I don't know why y'all shout the word of God so loud. I don't know why y'all call God so loud. I don't know why y'all being so loud with God. I said, we are trying to get God's attention. That's what it's about. I haven't seen him yet since that episode. But we got music that will soothe you, music that will pick you up, music that will keep you going. We got music. Let's get it on there.
God good. My, my, my. God is good. How good is God? If God created you, God has to be good. Amen? Huh? If God created me, God has to be good. And if God created all of us, I don't understand why it's not good enough for us to like everybody. God didn't make any junk. God didn't make any junk. No, no mistakes. You're here because God wanted you to be here. And we like to say here at Glide that if God created you, we want you. That means you cannot let race get in the way of becoming a part of this community. You cannot let your cultural baggage get in the way. Your baggage, amen, huh? Don't let your baggage get in the way of being a part of this community. Don't let your religious tradition keep you from being a part of this community. Amen. And Lord knows, don't let your sexual orientation Amen. get in the way of enjoying and having a community that you can come to and be supported by. Huh? There are no excuses. None. I just removed all the props and excuses we use for why we won't go somewhere. Well. This is the church you've always dreamed about. Hmm? Oh yes, you know, I know you like me. I said there's got to be a church in this world where everybody can come, huh? And not be worried about what folk going to say and what they going to think, huh? It's here. Here it is. Here it is. Right here. Right here. So I'm suggesting to you, stop your shopping right now. <laughs> At the close of the celebration, you go through the door on your right. The first door you come to on your left is the Maya Angelou room. Go in there. Sisters and brothers are waiting to talk to you about what it means to be a part of this community. That's as simple as it is. Hmm? Now, you can't get that at Macy's or anybody else, huh? It's simple. Just go to the door and talk to folk. Amen. We're not going to make any background checks on you. Amen. Because if we did, none of us would be here. Amen. Okay. Uh, so, so we ain't checking, all right? Y'all come on in. Amen. God bless you. That's right, boo. Background checks. Yeah. Thanks, Douglas. No background checks. Okay. Well, I'm here. My name is Dorian. <laughs> and I'm here to lift the offering and uh, tell you a few things, uh, give the announcements. And uh, first I want to say, wow, we're, we're having a really great time. Is this not a great Sunday or what? The music is amazing. You are amazing, I tell ya. Um, Douglas talked, besides the background check thing, he talked about <laughs> how Glide has become a family tree, and sometimes you can shake it and see what members of your family fall out. <clears throat> uh, it reminded me, because it's preying on my mind, I'm, uh, in July I'm going to one of the hottest states in the country, during the hottest month of the year, South Carolina in July, in part to attend a family reunion. Uh, <laughs> pray for me. Inevitably, it will lead to a Sunday at church, and I can guarantee you it won't be as wonderful as this is today, so definitely pray for me. Um, one of the other reasons I'm here besides your prayers is to tell you a little bit about Glide. And what really struck me on the drive-in this morning was that I like to be here, and uh, the people who come regularly, and God knows we're some church-going people, <laughs> make Glide happen. They are the soul of Glide. And new people, if it's your first time here, 
Your presence here is helping us help other people at Glide. It's a powerful thing. And I can only encourage you to come back. Uh, one of the lyrics in uh, the song that uh, Leah sings talks about how uh, you should be able to look in the mirror and know that God never made a mistake. Right. Our goal is to make sure that everyone, everyone here, everyone around here, the people in the lines, the people coming to the myriad of programs that Glide has can look in the mirror and know that God did not make a mistake, did not make a mistake with them, with their lives, and that all they may need is a little help from their extended family. That's us. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to ask you to be generous and help us help other people look in the mirror and have a sense of family that I get every time. I've been here 10 years. <laughs> and uh, Glide has welcomed me, my wife. Uh, Yes, it took practice for me to say that wife thing, you know, gay people getting married and everything. I'm going to ask the ushers to come forward. We don't rehearse a lot of things here at Glide. And, uh, and I don't know if you came to church and you rehearsed how much you were going to give today, but give it up. You're not, so th this is your unrehearsed contribution. So just in case your hand just grabs more money than you thought it was going to, just go with that and put it in the basket because uh, we know that your presence here, volunteer hours, and just your being at this celebration, which is one of our biggest programs, it saves a lot of souls. And the person next to you needs you here too. That's what I felt the first time I came here. The person next to me was a stranger. And by the time it was over, it, they weren't. So thank you for your gifts today. Thanks, Boo. <laughs> oh, boy, we have some wonderful things here. You know, it is Memorial Day weekend, and we do want to honor those people who have served in our military and who have died and who are fighting now. May God bless them and keep them safe and return them to us. And God save us from somebody who's going to be barbecuing today or tomorrow. <clears throat> they may burn something. And I'm asking you to be prepared. You can go downstairs and buy this lovely ensemble. Which ensemble? Yeah, right. <laughs> She's getting there. She's getting there. Let's move on. Uh, it has a travel cup that says Glide and Love Matters. And it's beautiful, great. It's waterproof, I believe, also. This benefits our children's program. They also have a book of poetry called Love Matters. Yeah. And this way you can pack the food that you will eat. <laughs> and take it with you to this picnic because you know your uncle has some problems with fire. <laughs> <laughs> buy two, you know, somebody, yeah, buy two. Thank you. All right, let's get to the announcements here. Yeah, there you go. Fire up the grill. Glide is actively recruiting young women and men ages 18 to 24 for Youth Build. The ushers are coming down. Yeah, oh, there we go. Our new jobs training program. Youth will be paid while they train for jobs in the construction trades, earn a GED or a high school diploma, and learn to become community leaders. Get more youth build information downstairs after the service. Glide's next new member volunteer orientation will be held on June 5th from 12.30 to 2.15 in room 206. This will be a great opportunity for you to get to know Glide, to meet new folks, and to hear your options for involvement. Everyone is welcome to attend. I have to say that this is a great thing, because going to church as a kid, I never knew what our church did. Had no idea. And pretty much any Glide member who stops you on the street or wherever you are knows what Glide does. That we work 24-7 to try to help other people. So it's a great thing. Join the church. Go to the orientation. There's an exciting grassroots movement in San Francisco which is getting national attention and has proven successful in getting services to the homeless. Please join Cecil and Glide in support of our Mayor's Project Homeless Connect. And this is on June 3rd. Take that day off from work and make a difference. Take a day off from work. 
For more information <laughs> or to sign up, please go to the volunteer table in Freedom Hall after the celebration. Hope Line Glides Lay Ministry Programs, one of them, uh, offers a lifeline of person-to-person -person care to the Glide family in times of crisis and celebration. If you or someone you love would like some support, please call the number on the flyer in the pews. And there's a flyer in the pews. Join us June 30th. This is a party, people. Uh, and we can party. We, we're really good at that. And support Glide's annual auction at the Best of the Bay event. And there will be a performance by the wonderful Glide Ensemble. Yeah. Fantastic food, drinks, and an amazing array of auction items to bid on. Get your tickets today after celebration in Freedom Hall at the aforementioned Volunteers Table. Prayer group meets on Wednesday evenings from 5.30 to 6.30 p.m. Bible study meets on Thursday evenings from 6 to 7.30 p.m. Gentlemen. Glide has audio, video, and compact disc of this morning's celebration. And tapes and CDs of the Glide Ensemble. We also have Glide t-shirts, sweatshirts, caps, sports bottles, books, and don't forget the new bag, Love Matters. We have Barry on the runway. All the proceeds <laughs> from the dancing group up here go to support all those glide programs. Help somebody look in the mirror and know that they are not a mistake. If God made you, we want you. Amen. Thank you for your gifts. Thank you, Dorian. Thank you very, very much. John Turk and the Change Band over here. Ronnie on drums, Glenn on bass, Tim on guitar, Joel on trombone, Dave on trumpet, and Charles on saxophone. John Kirk, the change band. And the incomparable Glide Ensemble. Following their next song, we shall hear from a young woman who has won our hearts. I had to give it away, and so I gave it to the preacher of the morning. Amen. She's been here with us just a few years, but the difference amounts to many years. Amen. Following the next song, we shall hear from our own Reverend Karen Yunker. Good morning, Glide. I'm a 
little bit too close I got to tell the world of the saving grace
Thank you. Good morning, Glide family. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, darlings. First, I'd like to give a special blessing to the Westbrook family and uh, thank God that they're here with us and that their beloved has made a peaceful transition. Thanks for being here. So some of you know this is the second in a two-part series. This is Sermon 10B. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, when I made the promise to do 10B, I actually didn't realize what a growing edge that would be to make a commitment like that and to have to answer some of the questions that came up and to keep my word about that. So I appreciate it. It's been a growing edge for me. And I probably would be reluctant to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> And it's been a while, and you know, many of you weren't here, so I'm just going to do a quick review of Sermon 10A. <laughs> That'll work too. <laughs> so the message of 10A is that there is no hell. Okay. I'm glad about that. And not just because I say so. In the original languages of the Bible, hell is mentioned nowhere. The word hell was a purposeful mistranslation of the Hebrew and the Greek inserted by the church state to control the common people. Eternal damnation, yay. <laughs> Eternal damnation, the afterlife of endless suffering for sinners was an invention. It is a lie. It is a myth contrived by the ancient church, by our European ancestors to terrify the early church people and to terrify us into submission. Right. Hell was invented as a mental, emotional, and spiritual crowd control. We were lied to when we were told that the Bible proves hell and who will go there. <laughs> hell is non-scriptural. There is no hell in the delicious heart of God and there is no hell in the original languages of the Bible. In the original manuscripts, the scriptures consistently support a doctrine of universal salvation. Universal salvation. Thank God for that. That's a good thing. And I do not pretend to know anything about the afterlife. I do not know what happens after death and how all of that gets sorted out. But I do have something to say about heaven. The fight is fixed. Let's celebrate the victory for the battle is already won. God is great. God is great. And and this, my beloveds, is Sermon 10b, the one about heaven. <laughs> hey, heaven. Here we go. And Holy Spirit, I ask you to move in the speaking and the listening of my voice. So first of all, because I am a mathematician at heart and by training, there's just something that I have to get out of my system. Our culture is into either or situations. And an effort to wrest understanding and control a binary system is very clear and simple. We like our dichotomies, our mutually exclusive sets. And we say that the opposite of hell is heaven. And then we're led to ask, well, if there is no hell, what about my heaven? Well, now that we have distinguished that hell is no thing, that hell is fiction, that hell is nowhere, that hell is false, the opposite of hell must be truth, with a capital T, that is everywhere. And truth is true. And truth is whole. And being the opposite of hell, heaven is true and everywhere. There is no place where God and God's love for us is not. Heaven is right now, and we can choose it. Right, Gisela? 
<laughs> right. A big, tough samurai once went to see a little monk. Monk, he said in a voice accustomed to instant obedience, teach me about heaven and hell. The monk looked up at this mighty warrior and replied with utter disdain, teach you about heaven and hell? I couldn't teach you about anything. You're dirty, you smell, your blade is rusty, you are a disgrace to the samurai class. Get out of my sight, I can't stand you. And the samurai was furious. He began to shake. He got all red in the face and was speechless with rage. He pulled out his sword and raised it above him, preparing to slay the monk. That is hell, the monk said softly. The samurai was overwhelmed. The compassion and surrender of this little man who had offered his life to give to this teaching, to teach him about hell. Slowly, he put down his sword filled with gratitude and suddenly peaceful. And that is heaven, said the monk softly. There are two voices in our mind. And one is heavy and human and small and left to its own devices, hell. And the other voice is holy and pure and spacious and left to its own devices, heaven and we can bring our small earthly mind into wholeness with the voice of God our highest power our highest self heaven right here in our minds Amen. there is a piece of divinity in each and every one of us it is like the softest whisper a vague fragrant memory and if you listen closely, you'll hear this forgotten harmony. You will feel the delicate, cooling radiance. And in the scripture, there is a beautiful and perfect example of this bringing the human to the divine in our minds. And many of you will know this story. But a few of you will know that it is paralleled to a story in the Mayananda Buddhist tradition. In the Buddhist parallel, there is no third character. And so we're going to take a look at the two characters that are common in the Buddhist and Judeo-Christian tellings. And usually when we look at this familiar story, we relate ourselves to one or the other of the characters. I'm more like that one. That one's more like me. And today I'm going to ask you to look at this ancient story from a new perspective. We're going to look at this Bible story as an archetypal dream where all of the characters are in the same mind. Right. In my mind. In your mind. In courageous dream and life interpretation, all of the characters we experience represent aspects of ourselves. When we dream about so-and-so, that they represent an aspect of you interacting with other aspects of you. This biblical archetypal story is about a son who demands his share of his father's estate, sets off for a distant country, and squanders his wealth in wild living. He spends all he has, and there is a severe famine in the land. He begins to be in need. When this Jewish man realized he would have eaten the pig's food if it had been offered to him, he realized he had bottomed out. He came to his senses, realizes he could go work for his father. He gets himself up and goes there. The father sees him a long way off and is filled with compassion. He runs to his son and kisses him and throws a lavish party. Let us feast and celebrate, for the son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And so they began to celebrate. The son is rebellious and self-serving and ultimately broken. The father is compassionate, enthusiastic, and generous. The son is the part of my mind rooted in pleasure and survival. Hell. The father is the part of my mind rooted in grace and gratitude. Heaven. I am that son and I am that father. The son represents the voice of your ego, your small s self. 
And the Father represents the voice for God in your mind. And looking in the scripture in this way, I notice that the Father does not forgive the Son. And you know how we forgive. We see the offense, and we forgive it anyway, because we're just so darn forgiving. <laughs> That's how we forgive. And contrary to popular belief, there is no forgiveness in this story. The Father does not forgive. The Father does not even see the offenses of the past. He only sees his son, and there, there is nothing to forgive. The father doesn't see any son, sin. He sees his son in his original state, his original blessing, as he remains. And notice that the father is incomplete without the son. The father is not whole and complete until the son gets there. He runs to meet him, and only together is there peace. The Father's pure vision creates atonement, at one -ment for both of them. And in our minds, this experience of atonement is the experience of heaven. The Father and Son can only experience heaven, atonement, and peace together. Atonement is not in spite of our humanity. It is a both and whole integrity. We experience heaven or atonement when we, in our own minds, bring our humanity to our innate divinity. And when we, in our own minds, bring our innate divinity to our humanity, the Son can be brought to the Father. And this is what Jesus meant when he said, no one comes to the Father except through me. He didn't mean me, like the entity, like the person of Jesus. He meant the truth of us that he was demonstrating, our shared identity, the place in us where divinity and humanity intersect. He demonstrated what life looks like when a human being chooses for the voice of God in his mind. And deciding for God, Jesus showed us that this decision can be made and that we can make it. Our small M mind can be brought to our capital M mind, and here enlightenment is possible. The voice for God will run to us if we will get ourselves up and go to her. And we really can choose heaven. And in fact, it is sane to choose heaven. Conflict and insanity arises when we, when we live as if untruth is true. And some of us have had glimpses and more than glimpses of this spacious place, this heaven right here where we are. Because enlightenment is not a change. It is a recognition of truth. We must begin to recognize that we are the holy beloveds of God, that we are originally blessed by the voice for God in our minds, and to the extent that we deny our identity, that is hell. Because it is madness to deny that the truth that peace is available in our minds right where God put it. And we can seek and will find rest and atonement if we will decide for it. None of the debauchery or baloney, none of the asinine, mean, petty things that we've done can touch or taint the part of our minds where God lives in us. None of our bad behavior touches our identity. It remains unmoved. There is no light to seek. The light is in us right now. We remain as God created us, and all else is folly to believe. And my darlings, there is a child in us who seeks our Father's house. 
our original blessing remains intact and accessible, and we must seek it and choose it, forsaking all other choices. And we can choose it right now. And when we don't actively choose to bring our small mind to the divine mind in us, we get tossed about by the downs and ups of life, and we feel threatened. Our human, animal, ego, small self wigs out, gets loud, takes over, raises its sword, anger, malice, revenge, and we're back in hell. Yeah. 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 And A Course in Miracles says, we have been given everything. If we refuse to recognize it, we are not entitled, therefore, to our bitterness and a self-perception which regards us in a place of merciless pursuit where we are badgered ceaselessly and pushed about without a word or thought or care for us or our future. Hear this. Gratitude becomes the single thought we substitute for these insane perceptions. God has cared for us and calls us beloved. Can there be more than this? You are the holy beloved of God himself. Remember this, and earth and heaven are one. I'm choosing heaven today. And heaven is a choice we aren't generally aware of because the unheaven mind gets so much attention and it's so loud and flashy. So how do we choose heaven? Well, we choose it. We let the truth be true. And we let this truth and the learning of it be the choice we make. And this takes discipline. And it takes spiritual practice. And now it takes mental practice. And listen, we are not Buddhists simply because we're nice to people and we're vegetarian. <laughs> and we are not Christians simply because we go to church once a week and we're mostly nice to people. You are not fooling God or enlightenment. Take a discipline. Upgrade your discipline. It is the only way out of the hell in your mind. I urge you. We need, as Jack Cornfield tells us, a repeated discipline, a genuine training in order to let go of our old habits of mind and to find and sustain a new way of living. Let the pursuit of heaven become the aim of your effort and expenditure of your time. Come on, let's go. And fortunately, heaven is fun, heaven is fun and spacious and does not take itself too seriously. And as our Jardin puts it, terrible or not, difficult or not, the only thing that is beautiful, noble, religious, and mystical is to be happy. And so today's offered practice is in the form of a silly little song. And this song will turn up the volume on the voice for God in your minds. It will bring your whole mind back to its state of original blessing, the place where the light, the peace, the space, and buoyancy only given by the enlightenment place there can bring. And I know you don't have time for spiritual practices, and you have plenty of disciplines already, and you'll get to it tomorrow. So I suggest you practice this practice in the ordinary times. Do not set time aside. Don't do that. <laughs> Instead, practice this practice in the shower, when you're doing your hair, when you're putting on your clothes or your shoes, when you're riding in the car, when you're waiting for the bus, when you're waiting for the phone. Any waiting at all is perfect for this singing spiritual practice. Perfect for the chance to make some joyful noise. And, first of all, notice all the crap that your mind wants to wander off about rather than sing a song that might lead to enlightenment. 
that, <laughs> yes, that noticing alone is golden. And then bring your mind to the enlightenment song that you are singing. You will sing it out loud and you will listen to yourself sing it. There is no in your head singing until you've done your out loud singing. So I'm going to teach you a little song. And Bernadette, I'm just going to do the, I mean, I'm sorry, Gwen, I'm just going to do the first set. So you can just leave it, leave the first set of words up there. So this is a very exciting time for me because until at the 9 o'clock, I had not sung by myself in front of a large group of people since I was in 8th grade. That's right. Praise the Lord. That's right. When Mrs. Fedgy called me down from the choir, stop singing, Karen, come down, ring the bells during Jingle Bells, and I made that mean I was the worst singer in the choir. You're about to find out. <laughs> so, I'm going to sing the first verse through, and then I'm going to request that you sing it with me. And I'm going to request that you listen to yourself singing it. And even if, don't listen to your neighbor sing it, don't listen to the group sing it, even if you only can whisper it because you have a similar injury to mine. <laughs> I request that you do whisper it and listen to yourself saying the words. It's a little song called, I'm Choosing Heaven Today. And there are the words, and here is me singing it. <laughs> So it goes something like this. <laughs> I'm choosing heaven today. I'm starting in the middle. I am walking the road of heaven right now, singing. I'm choosing heaven today. I'm choosing heaven today. I'm choosing heaven today. I am walking the road of heaven right now, singing. I'm choosing heaven today. Listen to yourself, sing it. I'm choosing heaven today. I'm choosing heaven today. I am walking the road of heaven right now, singing. I'm choosing heaven today. One more time. I'm choosing heaven today. I'm choosing heaven today. I am walking the road of heaven right now. I'm choosing heaven today. Thank you. Very nice. Fabulous. Thank you. Can you have a seat? Thank you for that. And so here's your homework, your prescription. You will sing this song out loud at least 10 times a day. <laughs> and you can sing it once 10 times, or five times twice, or twi twice five times, any way that you want to do it. Just sing it and listen to yourself. If you sing it out loud with someone else, you only have to sing it six times a day. <laughs> and really, listen to yourself singing it. Sing out loud, even if you're grouchy and resistant. Sing out loud, especially if you're depressed or worried or tired or afraid. We need to do our part. Notice that the sun brings himself back home. But be advised that you may experience a giddy remembrance. You may find yourself smiling and feeling a little younger than you're used to. The truth of the words will be as a long forgotten song and they will gain clarity as you are once again willing to hear this truth. Right. Choosing heaven is choosing truth and so this choice brings sanity. The noise in our mind will quiet enough so that we can hear our hearts. And this is atonement. This is peace. This is heaven. And once we know that heaven is available in our minds, we give up the right to bitterness and stuckness. We lift up a song and lay down the sword. We choose between illusions and truth, between hell and heaven. 
We choose the peace of God instead of conflict. We choose to sing the enlightenment song rather than grumble about having to get up in the morning. We choose the light of heaven for the darkness of the world. Peace and heaven is shining in you now. And when we bring our minds to this atonement, this original blessing, this heaven, the peace of God that shines from our hearts and minds extends around the world. There is no hell. And we are choosing heaven today. And we celebrate for those who can accept their true identity are truly saved. And today we have the opportunity to choose atonement, to bring ourselves back home to our original divinity, and to throw our arms around our own humanity. God is in heaven, and God is in us. Earth and heaven are, are one. Let us feast and celebrate. Let us sing ridiculous songs about truth, victory songs. We are pure. We are safe. We are holy. We are restored to sanity. We are choosing heaven today. Amen. God is great. God is great. Thank you.